Okay, I have a fun topic for everyone today. It's an interesting one, but it's really an important one. So it's, you know, for all of you out there who have this issue, uh, might be important to discuss either with your primary or your ideologist. But here we're going to review the, the needs and for those people who are trapped in this, in this cycle, and I'm going to put in some ideas in which you can resolve uh, the situation, and that is sleeping with your hearing aids or your cochlear implants. And with cochlear implants, it's a little bit worse, the situation, so we're going to review that one. So. <laughs> For those of you who uh, sleep and uh, but have this strong need to wear your hearing aids, now what's the issue with that? The problem is that when you sleep or try to sleep with your hearing aids, is that every time you move, you know there's going to be a sound, you know, from your pillow, from your blanket, it's going to wake you up. So you're going to have a very interrupted, disturbed sleep. And you're really not going to sleep as profound as you should. So you're, you're tired during the day. You're struggling. And you, you're trying to figure out, OK, why am I so tired? I did sleep last night. I had my hearing aids on. And you know, I understand the, the concern. Usually people who use their hearing aids and sleep with them on is because they want to hear their environment. They want to be aware of their environment because when they take out their hearing aids, they can't hear anymore. And so that is, you know, uh, an issue for a lot of you out there. And I'm sure that you're trying to figure out, okay, should I do this? Should I not do this? My personal observation and my personal stance is no, you shouldn't. <laughs> If there weren't any other solutions, I would say, mm, OK, well, let's work on this. <laughs> Turn your hearing aids down or something. But this is the issue. If you try to sleep, I understand the, the anxiety, the stress, the tension, the awareness of, wow, I can't hear my environment anymore. Uh, you know, And I have to wear, I have to do something to be aware to be aware of noise, to be aware of the fire alarm, to be aware of you know so many things in our environment. So I'm going to have to wear my hearing aids. And there's an alarm here, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> no, you don't. And that's the good thing. Because sleep is so critical and so important, we need to problem solve this situation, you and I, uh, because we both need to sleep and, and get a good sleep. Uh, we need that recharge. So the other solution is, and th for this, you might have to save up your pennies. And I'll put some images here, some pictures, and talk about this, is that there are uh, systems. like They look like alarm clocks. And they, uh, they are alarm clocks, actually. But they have a lot of gadgets in them that you can add. And that's what I did with my system. I you know, I'd purchase one piece, and then another piece, and then another piece I would save up and, and get the pieces I need. So first, I had the alarm clock because I needed to get up in time for work. <laughs> so And then I attached you know, a vibrator. It came with a vibrator. So then I was able to wake up on time. Then you know, the problem with the alarm. You know, if the fire alarm went off, I wouldn't hear it. So I saved up my pennies, and I got another gadget that belonged to the alarm clock that would signal the alarm, the alarm clock that the fire alarm went off, and then the vibrator would go off. And so I, I felt safe, and I felt more relaxed in that sense that, um, OK, so at least I had uh, the gadget necessary to hear the fire alarm, and I would know to get up. Then the other problem was, okay, you know, people would come through my door. They would, I'm sure they were knocking, but I couldn't hear the knock, you know, or I wasn't aware. I would be doing other things, 
and all of a sudden, you know, somebody would knock, but because I was hearing music or, you know, taping something, I just, I just wouldn't hear it. So they would just, to me, they were just barging in. <laughs> like, what, what, what happened here? Didn't you knock at my door or alert me somehow? And they said, of course I knocked. So, so that was another issue. So I purchased, I purchased, uh, I think it came with the alarm clock, a doorbell. So the doorbell, <laughs> the do I had to put up a doorbell. I felt silly doing it, but I thought better safe than sorry. And for me to not be scared out of my skin, <laughs> for the person to, you know, have to use the doorbell. So I had to kind of train people to do that. And so, you know, then I had, you know, uh, the clock would go off and then I would turn it off because I would know somebody was coming in. So that was a good thing. However, sometimes I would turn around and I would have my back to the alarm clock and to the door. And so they would ring the doorbell and of course my, um, my clock would start flashing and I, I wouldn't see it because I had my back to it. So I purchased another gadget, a smaller gadget that would talk to the alarm clock. And if somebody rang the doorbell, then I could see the smaller gadget, and then I would turn it off and say, please come in, you know? So, so these are little, little gadgets that I purchased that would talk to the alarm clock and let me know what was going on. There is another one that I'm thinking of getting, but um, not yet. It, this alarm clock also uh, can, can signal motion. <laughs> so. So um, I don't know. I don't know if I want that one. You know, if if it starts triggering, you know, and there's nothing there, I don't think I want to know that. <laughs> but if you want in one for motion, it has you know a limit of of distance. So if you want to put it outside your door somewhere in the house, um, it has a limited uh, distance. So you'd have to figure that out. But what I'm saying is there is a solution for you to be able to take out your hearing aids and be able to relax completely and get a good sleep and let this alarm clock system alert you of important sounds. If somebody's coming in or the fire alarm, you know, so that's really important. The other solution that you can apply to that to be able to sleep and get a good night's sleep without wearing your hearing aids is to get a service dog, <laughs> a hearing service dog. They exist. And uh, you might have to save up. Some companies uh, will get a donor for you, and that donor will be involved in the process of the training of the, uh, in the process of getting this dog ready for you. And, and, and all of it will be paid through this donor or a couple of different donors. So um, so then you wouldn't have to pay for it necessarily. Uh, in some cases, you do have to pay all of it. In some cases, you don't because they have donors who will jump in and help you out. So you could get a service dog. But then you have to think about, OK, do I want the service dog to only be here in the house? Or do I want the service dog to help me outdoors as well? <laughs> My processor uh, battery just alerted me. It might die in this uh, video, but that's okay. <laughs> so if do I want this service dog to help me outdoors, traveling, you know, all that kind of stuff, and indoors? So how much training do we need to invest in this service dog? So that's another thing. You know, I realized that I was sleeping a whole lot better when I had Johnny, my service dog. <coughs> because he was right there, he was right there by my side, and he was my alarm clock. <laughs> so he would hook me with his nose. Okay, time to get up, time to get up. Food, food, food. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he was great. So there you have your solutions. You have the alarm clock system. Uh, you have your uh, possible service dog if you wanted that. Um, so you don't have to wear your hearing aids to go to bed because it's going to wake you up, folks. It's going to keep you awake. 
and you're not going to get the appropriate sleep that you need. So there could be other solutions that you could bring here and, and post them uh, down below. But as far as I know, service dog or alarm clocks that can alert you to different things. And that you can look it up on, on the net. And I'll leave uh, links in the description box that will take you to uh, one of them. I'm, I'm an affiliate uh, with... Um, I'll have to look it up, but uh, I am an affiliate with that one, and I'll put a notice for that. Um, so I get all it means is I just get a little portion of the sales. If you follow my link, uh, it'll go to directly to the company, and you can purchase that unit, that alarm clock that connects to other system, other little gadgets that talk to the alarm clock to let you know of the fire alarm and all that kind of stuff. So um, so moving on to cochlear implants. Folks, this is even more tangled up because the cochlear implant is, and listen to me very carefully, is electrical stimulation to the hearing nerve. <laughs> Let me say that again. It's electrical stimulation to the hearing nerve constantly. You know, so you can hear, so you can be aware of your environment, and so if you wear them to go to bed, it's going to continue to work. It doesn't know you're going to sleep. <laughs> so it's going to continue to stimulate your hearing nerve. And um, that's not a good thing because it's not letting you relax. You know, your brain knows when you're resting. And, you know, it will gradually, slowly, you know, shut down. And because you're deaf with cochlear implants, um, you know, that portion won't shut down because you have your implants on. I get it. You're nervous. You want to be aware. And your cochlear implants uh, have the same problem that when you move and you uh, rustle against your pillow or your blankets, uh, that sound's going to wake you up. And then what's not going to let you really get to that deep sleep is that constant stimulation to the hearing nerve. And so you're going to be very tired in the morning. You're not going to get the appropriate, appropriate sleep that you need. So what do we do? Same thing, the same solutions. Is, you know, an alarm clock that has all these little gadgets. So it'll talk to the alarm clock and let you know what's going on in your environment. Or a service dog. So this is really important for you to know how critical it is to sleep. And if you're stuck and you're really nervous and you just, <laughs> then you need to talk to your audiologist or your primary care doctor to say, hey, I'm really not sleeping because I will not take off my processors from my cochlear implants off and I won't, um, I won't take out my hearing aids to be able to sleep at night because I'm nervous about all this. Because when you're going to bed, your brain is saying, hey, Lisa, what about if the alarm goes off? Lisa, what happens if, if there's a breaking and you're not aware of it? Lisa, what happens if, you know, and it keeps on going on and on and on, and your brain is, is, is so hyper that it's, it's forcing you to get into a behavior, which would be using your hearing aids while sleeping or using your cochlear implants while sleeping, and um, you're so hyper nervous about your environment that you wear your curing apparatuses and then you don't sleep. And that's not what I want. <laughs> that's not what I want for you because it's going to cause you exhaustion, a lack of attention. It's going to cause you some mood issues as well because you're, n because you're so tired. Um, you know, you, you can't deal with so-and-so, you can't deal with this, you can't deal with that because you don't have the attention span <laughs> anymore because you didn't sleep, you weren't able to sleep. So this is something that you really need to pay attention to for all of those people because I've heard people saying, you know, I sleep with my hearing aids, what do you do? You know, I won't let go of my processors, I won't take them off, I'm too nervous. What if something happens? 
What if the alarm goes off? You know, so I've heard those, those, those concerns from users out there. So I just want to let you know that there are two solutions that are really important. And I haven't mentioned brands because you know I think it's important for you to be free to choose the brand you want in terms of electronics if you want that to alert you or um, if you want a service dog. Um, I, you know, and I really don't know companies. You, it's, I think it's best to look in, in your own state, uh, companies that train service dogs, and especially not every company trains hearing dogs. Not every company trains uh, dogs for the blind. So you have to kind of do your research and, and figure out. I think the better, the, the, the bigger the company, for some reason I feel the, the bigger the company, the better. But anyway, that's my twist on it. Um, so, so the other thing that might be important for you is to um, <coughs> start trying to relax before you go to bed. Turn off the TV. Get away from the computer and shut that down. Because all these electronics that we use, the phone, the computer, the TV, those all will you know, keep our brain going and hyper. So it's really important to have a routine to start going into, you know, a bed routine, going to bed routine and shutting off all these lights, all these cameras that we watch all the time. And, you know, listen to soft music. Um, this is what I do sometimes when I feel like, you know, I'm having a hard time sleeping. I know it's a little silly, but you know, you can do something different. <laughs> There's this gal, her name is Nancy, and she has a channel in which people submit um, stories about Sasquatch, Bigfoot. But her reading skills are so incredible. They're, it's really soft and, and so good that you know, I'll listen to her stories and that starts to help me to relax and to fall asleep. And then when I feel like I'm getting to that point where I'm going to fall asleep, then I take off my processors, both of them, and I put them in the jar and I go to sleep. So you might need something like that to listen to music, to listen to nature sounds, to listen to uh, a storybook. There might be some channels out there that um, there's somebody who reads and their voice is very soothing, and you listen to the story, and that helps you to fall asleep. So, you know, to establish a routine for going to sleep is also really important. So this is just a, 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 an idea that you could try. The important thing is to sleep, to be able to sleep, to be able to set up a system um, to, for you to be able to, to relax and to know you're going to be okay when you close your eyes. And that's the other thing, too. When you close your eyes, that's it. You've lost your senses to, to be aware. So some of you have a husband or <laughs> some of you have a brother living with you or a cousin or a mom. So uh, there you are. You know, you rely on them, your family member, to to be hearing and, and be alert of of the environment. So so that fixes that. <laughs> but <laughs> they're like, you're a service doggy. <laughs> you're a service person. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not sure I tell my mom that, <laughs> but <laughs> but you ha you're living with family members, so um, they are aware, so you you trust them. Um, so that's what I wanted to say about sleep. It is critical, and if you're not sleeping, you're constantly wearing your hearing aids and constantly wearing your processors. Uh, during your sleep, you, you have an issue because you're really not sleeping. You're really not getting to that uh, deep sleep that you need for your health, and uh, that will need some assistance, either for you to trust in some electronics to alert you or to have a service dog, or to trust your family member 
to alert you of, you know, if something serious is going on. So uh, that's what I had for today. And if you have questions about it and you really want to discuss it, you know, m more deeply, talk to your um, audiologist because they usually know if in your state, you know, sometimes there's vouchers to get these systems. Um, so you, it would be zero out of pocket. Sometimes states will have a loaner uh, program in which you use the equipment for as long as you need it. Um, and then when you move out of state, you return it. Uh, or if you got your service dog, you can return the equipment. So uh, there's a couple of different plans you can, you can look into and you know, talk to your primary or talk to your audiologist to figure this out. I'm just saying that the lack of sleep will affect your, your health. So, and I want the best for you to be able to, to relax. And, and that's very hard when you're constantly hyper and, and concerned. So uh, let's, let's work on this, folks. Let's try to see if we can improve or if this video can, has given you enough tips for you to be able to find a way to, to sleep and relax and get, get the rest that you need every night. I wanted to thank everybody for coming around and, and being with me today. Uh, you know, you could have been doing anything else. You could have been doing the lawn. You could have been shoveling your snow. You could have been going to work. <laughs> but, but thank you for spending a few moments with me to listen to this topic to, that to me is really important because well, I want everybody to be healthy and get the rest they need. So thank you for coming by. And I hope to see you in the next one.